that concept you were taught as a kid, that if you put a lot of food on your plate, but then you realize that your eyes were just massively larger than your stomach and you don't want to finish, your parents are still going to make you eat all of it because you made a commitment when you put it all on your plate. So that, that idea was instilled in me from a very young age. For example, one day I'm very young and my granny bakes a loaf of zucchini bread. Exciting. And so I ask if I can have it. And she said, yes. So dumbfounded, I just, I clarified. I was like, all of it? And naively on her part, she replied again, yeah. So. I'm in the kitchen alone with an entire loaf of bread. I'm six and I am just, I'm chowing down. I'm going to town. I thought that I was going to eat all of it because I made a commitment to eat this entire thing of bread. So I tried really hard, but I got like halfway through and I couldn't quite do it. Uh, but to prove my devotion to this task I had set out to do, I did lick the remainder of it just to be like, hey, I'm gonna do this, but I just can't right now. <laughs> so I don't know if that's a relatable anecdote for anyone, but I bring it up to demonstrate this concept of commitment. Now, I think there is something to be said for completing a course or a camp or a loaf of zucchini bread, should you be so lucky. However, as we grow up, and we begin to make decisions for ourselves. What's my career gonna be? What school should I go to? Who are my friends gonna be? This, this commitment concept can actually become quite toxic. For example, two years into my BFA theater degree, I had to take a gap year for financial reasons. During that year, I, I reevaluated what I wanted my degree, my career, and I decided to completely change course and major in something else entirely. And I was so stressed about it because like my mom had already put so much money and time and effort into my theatrical pursuits. All my friends and family thought that performing and Broadway in New York City were what I wanted to do. And so my main stress was just about like letting everyone down. And that's where all my energy was going. Even though when I made that commitment to study theater, I was a completely different person with, with different things that I wanted to do. And so changing that as a changed person was okay. This concept not only applies to our educational and career pursuits, but it also applies to our relationships. Romantic, yes but less talked about and perhaps even more importantly are platonic relationships, friendships. Friendships are a strange sort of arrangement when you think about it. It's like you tell each other your hopes, dreams, fears, and then in exchange, there's this weird vow to never change and spend every waking moment with each other. This worked for me when I was 11 and all I wanted to talk about all day, every day was Nick Jonas. However, as an adult, I want to be in relationship with someone who wants to be constantly bettering themselves and changing and doesn't mind that I'm also a constantly evolving person. Like if someone says to you, I can't believe you're so different. Why are you a completely changed person from when I met you? Your reply should be nice. And why are you still the same person you were when I met you? Like, as human beings, we should be consistently and like feverishly trying to learn more about ourselves and, and become better, better versions. So if someone, if someone is keeping you from that, if someone isn't allowing you to do that, then you should distance yourself from that person. In simpler terms, don't be an asshole, but like, don't be a doormat to just be like trampled upon at the whims of someone who doesn't want to accept a newer and improved version of yourself. Like, 
if you're if you're eating this loaf of zucchini bread and you're about halfway through and your stomach really hurts, I think it's safe to say that perhaps you should not eat all of it. If, if the exchange for feeling more fulfilled and free and generally happier in life is to lose or disappoint a few people along the way, family, friends, then I think that's a pretty okay trade-off. I think that our parents knew what they were talking about when they taught us about commitment and about devoting yourself to something. So I'm not saying that you should run at the first sign of trouble, at the first disagreement, or if a college course is really difficult. Like, eat a significant amount of the bread, try it out. But if you're feeling a little, if you're feeling iffy, even after that, then it's okay to walk away. What's the worst thing that could happen?